Fate Zero is awesome. I went into it expecting a completely different show than what I got. It was really jarring seeing guns in a title I prior to watching, associated with medieval weaponry and dumb historical fanfiction. And this show wastes no time getting into the thick of things. Even the early episodes, which aren't jam-packed with action or well-animated fight scenes, are rich with characterization, motivations for each character, and damn good build-up for things that will happen in the near future. Overall, Fate Zero is a great show that went against my preconceived notions of the franchise. Then I went on to Unlimited Blade Works, and I just thought of it as dumb historical fanfiction. Let me just say up front that I only watched the first half of UBW, th that's what I'm calling it from here on out, and I already know people are gonna say that I didn't watch the whole thing, so I can't criticize it. But think about it this way, if the show was so bad to the point I had to drop it, isn't that a problem? I'm aware that the second half is probably a lot better, but that's not what I'm talking about, okay? Now, let's start with what I liked about this show. I liked the first two episodes, they set up the premise well, and introduced us to the two characters we'll be following effectively. And that's about it. Problem with the show and the major difference between this and Fate Zero is the shifting of priorities. In this show, it feels like the writers are primarily focusing on giving the main character a harem, whereas Zero felt like it was mainly concerned with telling a story, at least most of the time. I mean literally all of the time outside of this one scene. Dude, you have a wife. Okay, maybe that's a bit harsh. Outside of the harem elements of the show, there are some interesting discoveries made and developments that come up, but the second something remotely interesting happens, we're interrupted by Rin going, let's get some rest, tee <laughs> And then the characters fuck off and do some irrelevant shit. One moment characters will be fighting, or the main characters will be investigating something, and it'll be followed up by this boring slice of life scene where nothing of real consequence seems to happen. People keep making note of how many girls are in Shira's harem, and it's dumb. In Fate Zero, the protagonist blows up a building to kill one of the participants of the Holy Grail War. It's like a battle royale thing for people who haven't seen the show. And he blows up a building, and it's fucking awesome. It's engaging, and it's something that you'd see in a crime movie or something. It's great. And in UBW... Shira's just hanging out with his waifus again. And look, downtime's not a bad thing. I don't want to give the impression that something needs to be all explosions all the time to be interesting. An explosion is a superficial way to get the audience's attention, and it gets old really fast. Action gets repetitive if you don't space it out correctly, so more chill and lighthearted scenes are necessary to give you a bit of a break. But the problem with UBW is that they somehow found a way to make these segments which are supposed to be refreshing, more repetitive, than if they had just made people hit each other all the time. Every one of these segments feels like the same thing. The settings are the same, the type of dialogue is the same, the character interactions are all the same. Take Rin for example, if you look at her personality in isolation, she's pretty cool, very chill person, and honestly a lot different from what you would expect from a character classified as a tsundere. But what makes her annoying is the fact that in all of her interactions with the main character, she keeps blushing for no reason. Shiro could literally be eating a donut while farting out diarrhea and Rin could somehow still have the resolve to make this dumb fuck face. She does this every time the two of them interact and it gets repetitive. After seeing that for the 40th time, I go, okay, I do not give a rat's ass about anything that happens between these two. Every moment of downtime is filled to the brim with predictable and uninteresting interactions like these. So whenever I see the characters just hanging out, my mind wanders and I keep thinking to myself, man, when are we getting to the good stuff? Fate Zero just keeps giving giving you that good shit. The first three episodes are heavy on strong characterization for every major character we'll be focusing on, but then you get a battle royale between all of the Holy Grail War participants in episodes 4 and 5. They blow up a freaking building in episode 6. Episodes 7 and 8, the protagonists have to defend their mansion from that crazy fuck caster and the dude they tried to blow up before. This is all while a serial murder case is going on in the background, which is further explored in episodes 9 and 10. I could keep going. And I will. Episode 11, three of the most powerful heroes come together to chat and give us insight into their motivations and backstory. It's downtime, but it's interesting downtime, unlike a lot of UBW. It feels like the show is always telling you, don't worry, things are gonna happen but nothing ever does, or at least it doesn't without being interrupted by something else. There's no forward momentum, it doesn't feel like the characters are progressing at all. At a certain point, it's revealed that some mysterious man has been drawing satanic circles all around the school or something, and it'll do something really bad. So Rin and Shiro start looking for these circles and messing with them so they can't do that bad thing anymore. But then, after that sequence of them investigating the school, Rin straight up says that what they were doing wouldn't affect anything really, and when the circles do the bad thing, 
everything they were meant to. It, it shows, it really shows. Nothing they did affected this. He still did the thing... So what was the point of going around and tampering with this guy's plans? Saying that doing that weakened its potency is really vague and doesn't give the audience a tangible result to work with. See, things happen, but at the end of the day, they don't really need to. It's because of this that the characters feel so aimless, like they're just bumbling along, doing whatever they want, and then it all just magically works out in the end. And that's especially the case for Shiro. One of the biggest problems with UBW is that Shiro's not a very good protagonist. Now, a lot of people may actually agree with me about that, but I don't think a lot of people understand what makes him so infuriating. They might point to his very generic goody-two-shoes, nice-guy personality as his one big flaw, but the the truth is, that isn't the core issue with him. The biggest problem with Shiro is that he doesn't have any agency. How does he get involved in the Holy Grail War? By accident. How does he get involved in this conflict between the Holy Grail War participants? By getting kidnapped. Why does Saber get kidnapped by the end of the first half? Because he accidentally activated his command seal to stop her from fighting. He's never in control of what happens, that's what's so frustrating about him. Now, compare that to Kiritsugu from Fate Zero, he's the one who actively chose to participate participate in the Holy Grail War. He's the one who actively hunts down other Holy Grail War participants. He's the one who chooses to sacrifice certain people and relationships in order to accomplish something. He's always the one in control. That's why he's the main character. He's not compelling because he's a badass who uses guns and beats the shit out of people. He's compelling because it makes sense for him to be the protagonist of this story. Shiro lets the story happen to him, whereas Kiritsugu is the reason the story is happening. It also helps a lot that he has a dramatic stake in all of this. He wants to stay with his family, a family he genuinely cares for, and if he doesn't get the Holy Grail, he'll never see them again. There's a reason for me to care about this guy's motivations. That's a reason for me to root for him. Shiro, on the other hand, doesn't really have that. There's a talk that he has with Kiritsugu where he finds out that Kiritsugu gave up on being a hero of justice, so he says that he'll do it for him, and okay? I don't think that's enough for me to really get invested in your quest, and that also doesn't really relate all that well to the Holy Grail War, though to be fair, that specific problem is probably fixed in the second half with Saber being kidnapped and all. Because of that, Shiro now has a personal reason to be involved in all of this, but I won't know how anything went in that part because... I'll never watch it. I think that's all the main things I wanted to talk about, so here are some minor things. Kiritsuka's relationship with Saber was much more interesting than the typical milk toast dynamic that Shiro and Saber had. It felt like Rin did more as a little kid than she did during the first 13 episodes of UBW. UBW's writer sucks balls and pales in comparison to her counterpart in Zero. And that's all. I'll be going now. <laughs>